what were your options at the, you know, when you were 18 in terms of what you might do with your life? Well, I had absolutely no idea. And, oh. and uh, my options were, um, you know, get some quick, fast job, probably physical labor, mm -hmm. to, um, you know, to earn the bread. And, Where and were you? In Australia. Okay. I had uh, an opportunity of going to university, had finished high school, did average, mm -hmm. but passed, really hated school. Um, um, and I could have gone into journalism or um, the other option that was open to me was a sort of auditioning for, for a drama school. Right. Which, which I did. I could tell jokes yeah. and, and stories and, uh, and make stories up and convince people of things that weren't true. You were a liar. Kind of, yeah. yeah. A, a great liar. Yeah. Yeah. A good liar. Yeah. I'm not as good a liar now as I was then. Yeah. Because it's, <clears throat> you know, the lying thing is uh, something you have to try and overcome, I guess. Mm. Sure. And I try and put it into a, a framework where I can call it a profession now, mm. which is... Uh, it's called acting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Christopher Walken, one, the first time I ever did a casting session in America, yeah. terrified me. Me too. I mean, I'd, fucking hell, I came I'd, to meet the guy. They said, oh, he's flying, he's flying in from God knows where, Yeah, but he miles. didn't need a plane, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> he didn't need a plane. He came in, he was doing all the kind of Scorsese oh. stuff. And I said, have you had a chance to read the script? And he looked at me and he said, do you like my face? And I went, yes. And he said, well, that's fucking great, because if you don't, get uh, De Niro. Fuck you, I'm out of here and stood up and walked out. And everyone said, well, that I think was quite a good meeting. No, he came to see me on a rooftop in New York. I said, hey, can I, can I talk to you? And he said, sure. And he, he floated in mm. sideways mm. through a crowd of people. He was wearing black. And it was like one of those old vampire movies where they don't walk, but they glide. Mm. And he was a dancer, you know, so he has yeah, very, yeah. he's very, um, um, you know, graceful. Yeah. And he moved sideways and he just sat down in a chair next to me. And it kind of, frightened me mm. um, and he's a very smart guy mm. and we started talking and I didn't you know say much of anything about reading the script nothing I just started talking about the Middle Ages and mm. and he um, and he began to talk tortures and we swapped tortures because I'd read this book on torture mm -hmm. and and I I tried to recall some of the most heinous things I'd ever read in this book and and he was like oh Oh, and he'd try and top it, and it, it got. And my assistant was there, and he left because he he couldn't stand it anymore. Yeah, the, the air had turned cold, mm -hmm. and then he left, and I I wanted to leave, <laughs> and because I knew that I didn't want to work with him. Yeah, and he was getting scary. Yeah, and then I turned around, and it was on top of the Peninsula Hotel. I turned around to avoid his steady gaze at one point, yeah. and I was looking at a building with the top of the sixes on it, so there was a huge illuminated triple six, six in red, yeah. and I went from that to that to that, and he, st he started smiling, yeah. and I thought, oh no, Chris Walken is the Antichrist, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. There's a producer I know, successful producer, I, I will not mention names, but mm. his whole... Um, um, opinion about women on film from beginning to end is very brief. He says, women on film, either naked or dead. Both is better. Mm. And it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. whoa. Somebody once said my problem was I didn't understand the social contract here. I now understand what that means. Yeah. Do you understand it? The social contract? Yeah. I, th I think I do. Yeah. What uh, is it for you? Uh, the social contract. You can't get mad. Mm -hmm. You can't get mad. You can't let it get you. Because you have to have, you have to make a deal with everyone else and it's almost unspoken that you are going to be fucked over at some point by people who you may have done something nice for. Mm -hmm. And it may happen that by circumstance or even very purposefully that you fuck someone over but that shouldn't get in the way of you being able to sit down and have fun with them <laughs> I mean this is a bizarre place um, and it doesn't take very long if, if and I'm sure you've experienced this if you've stayed here for any length of time you come in you're fresh from the outside you're 
off the boat from the farm, still got shit on your shoes, you're in here, people are charmed by that, mm. that you've still got shit on your shoes. Uh, they're charmed by the fresh approach you bring to it, and that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. But they're also stroking the shit out of you, you know, mm -hmm. licking you all over. And, and that's kind of good for you, too. That's you, great. But it doesn't take very long before you realize, or before it gets to you, it's cascading on you all the time. You can't get away from certain attitudes, from certain modes of behavior that this town and the industry dictate. And no matter how strong you are, when you come in off the farm mm. with those convictions and those and a certain line of attack, no matter how strong you are, you are going to be affected by this place. Mm. And I formed a bunch of opinions about the town and about the people in it that were like, surely that couldn't be because a whole place can't be like, you know, weird town, you know, where the stranger wanders in and, and all the people are in the bar and they all shut up when he looks at them and, mm -hmm. and they tell you don't go out of the house on the hill. and It's like that. Mm -hmm. And then you go away and you think, no, that's, I was wrong. I mean, that's insane thinking. I'm paranoid. I imagined that stuff. That couldn't be the reason for why so-and-so was acting like could it? Mm -hmm. And then you find out later on the track that you are exactly on track mm -hmm. with a lot of this stuff. Not specifically on no, track, no. but that you could, uh, that some of your worst nightmares were real at the time and you think, <gasps> mm -hmm. Not being uncomfortable about... Not being uncomfortable. Realizing it for what it is. Projecting. N understanding what it is. Once you understand it, well then you're not afraid of it anymore, mm -hmm. so you can just walk around it and through it and, mm -hmm. and then get on with what you tried to get on with in the first place. A place like this can humiliate you mm -hmm. and it can be, it can either, it can humiliate you, it can be humbling. I mean, it, it does rip your life to pieces does it? if you'll let it. Yeah. And it's always pounding at the walls. It's yeah. the, these little guys, these little heathens with no soul downstairs with horns on their head with a battering ram trying to like beat your walls in. Yeah. It was glaring to me because I was an outsider who came in. But who isn't an outsider yeah. coming into this?